recognize this part from our free five axis academy. Now this is the third part in the installment where we start really talking about those simultaneous tool paths. We normally make this out of aluminum, but today we're stepping it up a notch. We're gonna make it out of titanium. And in this video, not only am I gonna show you the different techniques it's gonna take to take this part from titanium from aluminum, we're also gonna give you the feeds and speeds for every single tool. Now remember guys, if you want to learn how to program this part for yourself in aluminum, be sure to check out our website where you can learn how to do this completely for free. But as you can see, this part is really tall. So the things that we could get away with on aluminum, we're not gonna be able to get away with on titanium. So some of our techniques are gonna to have to change a little bit. And starting off, we're gonna to have to go with a bigger vise. Now with the aluminum part, we went with the KSC 125 vise that's mounted on a riser to get us up away from the table, but it's not gonna be strong enough to hold this titanium and rough way out here at the top. So for this, we're gonna to switch to a KSC 160 to get a little bit taller jaw and a little bit stronger on that clamping force. Now in the series, when we're roughing it out of aluminum, we're using a half inch end mill with a two inch length of cut and it's a three flute tool. Now for this, we're gonna use the Harvey four eight flute end mill and we're gonna start out by roughing the top and then we're gonna rotate down and start using a fourth axis strategy, rotating that C around and around and rough out all the way to the top before we start roughing out the shape. Now that's gonna help get the bulk of the material gone without losing any rigidity because we'll start out here on the end and work our way down. Now here's something I didn't do on the aluminum part that we're gonna to need to do on the titanium. In order to get a very consistent finish, you want to start out with consistent material left on your part. So if we just roughed it out and left it like it is, we got all these scallops that we end up forming on the part. Well, that's gonna hit inconsistent thicknesses when we're finishing. So I'm gonna take that half inch end mill and I'm gonna come right here on this OD and offset it by the diameter minus the radius. And we're just gonna go around that OD and knock off those scallops. So that's gonna end up leaving a consistent material along that OD. So when we come back and finish, we're not hitting those highs and lows and getting different tool pressures. So once we've used the fourth axis to rough away most of that material, then we'll come in and do some rest roughing, just like we did on the aluminum, where we come back and start whittling out that shape. Once that's through, now we can step down with a smaller tool. So at this case, we're gonna use a 332nd end mill and start rest roughing the star so we can get all that excess material gone before the 1 16th ball nose comes in to finish. So now we got most of the roughing done. Now we need to address this undercut. So for that, we're gonna come in with a 3 8 Harvey 1 TE ball nose, and we're gonna start spiraling down to rough out this groove. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put some forward tilt on that, something pretty extreme like 15 or 20 degrees to get up on that radius of that ball to stay away from that center of that tool. So we don't wanna drag the center of that tool across this material. So when we finish this groove, that same tool is gonna to step up and semi-finish this spiral for the same reason as the OD. We're gonna get rid of those scallops so we can get a consistent finish. Once we've done that, the next tool is gonna to be our finishing ball nose, which is a six flute ball and we're gonna start finishing the OD. Now, another thing you wanna think about when you're surface milling with a ball nose is not only getting off the tip, but you wanna be at a steep enough angle to make sure that you're engaging all of the flutes because not all the flutes goes to the center of the tool. Okay, so only typically only one flute or possibly two goes to the center of the tool. So we wanna be at a steep enough angle to make sure that we're engaging all six flutes of this tool.
Now, when we're finishing the OD, we don't have to worry about crossing the center of the tool. We're gonna stay on one angle. But notice when we're doing this spiral on the inside, that's not gonna be the case. Okay, if we simply fix it at one angle, then we're gonna go from one side all the way to the other, we inevitably will cross the center of that tool. So no matter what angle we put it at, at some point, we're gonna be dragging the bottom of that tool, which is not gonna be good. So what we're gonna do is instead of putting side tilt on it, we're actually gonna put forward tilt on the tool because that's literally the only thing we can do to not drag the center. But we're also going to do this from the outside to the center. As you see this running, it's gonna start on one side and go all the way around to the top. Then it's gonna pivot, shift back forward and start on the other side and work its way back down. And it's gonna alternate those back and forth all the way to the center. But no matter what, every time it's doing that, it's going to be on the leading edge of the tool, which is going to force it off the center. So it will always be forward always away from the center so we never have to worry about it dragging now the next tool that's coming in is our drill now mastercam makes it super easy to do multi-axis drilling because it's the same drilling tool path that you use on a three axis the only difference is you tell it five axis versus three and then you give it a boundary to stay away from so it knows how far it needs to retract <laughs> Now the last tool that's gonna to come in is a 1 16th ball nose that's gonna come in and do some rest roughing on the star to get what the larger tool couldn't reach. Now one thing I should note with all of these tool paths is I'm only climb milling. I'm not using a zigzag strategy. I always want to climb mill on something like this if I'm looking to get a super good finish. So that's how we went from aluminum to titanium on our Christmas tree. See you guys next time.